Okay, so uh, so let's do a very very quick recap. Okay, basically the last thing we saw was uh, d equals three uh, n less than or equal to fifteen constructions for B C H and Reed Solomon. So, basically you got the generator matrix as x power 4 plus x plus 1, here you would get x plus alpha times x plus alpha squared and what is this alpha? This alpha is a primitive element in G F 16. Okay, so, this gave you a n comma n minus 4 3 code, this is binary. Okay, so, this gives you a 16 array 15, no not 15, let me just write the n comma n minus 2 3 code. Okay. And we also draw drew pictures to see what what the difference between binary and 16 array are and what it means in practice and how how you can think about this in various different ways. Okay, so, it is important to know these differences. Okay, so, so, by now clearly I think you must have must have convinced yourself that this generator polynomial means a lot of things about the code, right. So, it is it's it critically controls all the properties of the code. The and of course, it is it is how do you construct the generator polynomial or how do you find the generator polynomial? You use the minimal polynomials of the elements in the finite field. So, clearly the minimal polynomials of the elements in the finite field also control what happens. Okay, so, it is important to know that distinction. Okay. So, let us go to d equals 5 in the same n, we will keep the same n and we will keep the same alpha. So, let us go to d equals 5. Uh, well, actually you can, it is an interesting question. The question is, does the concept of minimal polynomial come when you deal with reed solomon codes? In a way, yes. Okay, so, what is the minimal polynomial of alpha? It is x plus alpha, right, because I am, I am allowed to take coefficients from g of 16 itself. If you can take coefficients from the field itself, then simply x minus alpha will be the minimal polynomial always. So, the same idea holds, except that when you insist on coefficients from binary, you have to do something else. Yes, is there another question? In RS, it would be trivial. Yeah, it is always x minus alpha, x minus alpha square. So, it is the same thing. Okay, so, for d equals 5, for B C H, what will be the generator polynomial? Okay, so, you are going to get the rows of H, if you want to think of H it is going to be 1 alpha so on and then alpha squared and then alpha power 3 and then alpha power 4. Remember, it is just d minus 1 and then it will end I mean n is some n which is less than 15. So, you just take alpha power n minus 1 alpha square raised to the power n minus 1 so on. Okay, that is okay. I am going to leave it like that. Okay, so, for the B C H, the generator polynomial using our formula is going to be the L C M of the minimal polynomial of alpha times and then alpha squared and then alpha power 3 and then alpha power 4. The minimal polynomial of alpha, alpha square and alpha power 4 are all the same and that is x power 4 plus x plus 1. What about the minimal polynomial of alpha power 3? Alpha power 3 and alpha power 3. Alpha 3 and alpha So, it is easy to find the degree of the minimal polynomial, right? Without doing any Galois field arithmetic, you can find the degree of the minimal polynomial. What is the degree? Okay, so, let us first find that question. So, m alpha of x, you gave me a very simple answer that is correct x power 4 plus x plus 1, you know the entire polynomial. So, degree is 4. What is the degree of m alpha power 3 of x? 
Okay. This is basically the size of the set of conjugates of of alpha power 3. Okay. So, what are the conjugates of alpha power 3? Alpha power 3 you have to square it. So, alpha power 6 square it again alpha power 12 square it again alpha power 9 then you square it again you will get 3 again. So, you can stop it. So, the size of that is what? 4. Okay. How did I get this result that it is the size of the conjugates? Yeah, you have an explicit formula for the minimal polynomial. What is the explicit formula? X plus alpha power 3 times x plus alpha power 6 times x plus alpha power 12 times x plus alpha power 9. Okay, so, you can go back and check that right. So that was the result one of the main results of the minimal polynomials. You take all the conjugates do x plus and multiply you get the minimal polynomial. Okay, so, in this case this minimal polynomial will work out to x power 4 plus x power 3 plus x squared plus x plus 1. Okay, so, that is what this will work out to I know it beforehand. So, that is why I am writing it down I did not do the multiplication and figure it out you can do that you will get this answer. Okay, so, you will get x power 4 plus x power 3 plus x square plus x plus 1, but even without computing I know the degree. Why is it crucial to know the degree? I want the degree of bch of x. Okay, so, now g b c h of x is going to be m alpha of x times m alpha power 3 of x. Right? That is the least common multiple of all those things. Two, two different things, and they are irreducible. They don't have any common factors, etc. So clearly, you have to multiply these two things. Okay. So if you know exactly what m alpha of x is and m alpha power three of x is, then you can do the multiplication and find out exactly what g b c h of x is. But even without finding the polynomials explicitly, you can easily find the degree. Because I know the degree of m alpha of x is 4, degree of m alpha power 3 of x is 4, so you multiply you are going to get degree 8. Okay, so, that is important. Okay, so, this is the vital information sitting in the middle of all those computations. So, once you have that computation the b c h code simply becomes an n comma n minus 8 comma greater than or equal to 5. Okay, I can only say greater than or equal to 5, it is difficult to say anything beyond that unless you can explicitly show the existence of a weight 5 code word okay, or a weight 5 polynomial, you have to do that computation. Is it okay? What will happen in Reed Solomon? Picture is much much simpler, okay. So it's really really easy. What what do you do for Reed Solomon? Yeah, G R S of X simply X plus alpha times X plus alpha squared times X plus alpha power three times X plus alpha power four. Okay, so, clearly degree is 4 and you have a n comma n minus 4 comma exactly equal to 5, but this would be a 16 array code remember that. So, just to just to keep things interesting let us let us fix n equals 15 and look at the Reed Solomon code the R s code is 16 array 15 11 5 it can correct 2 errors in. So, what does it mean to say 15 11 5 the error correcting capability is 2 is in 2 symbol errors in 15 symbols can be corrected. 
okay. So, when you do an implementation if you do the binary conversion what do you get equivalently? It goes to 60, 44, again 5, right. Well, at least 5, um, okay, let us say at least 5. So, it is 5 basically. In case, case it will be equal to 5, we can show that. Sorry? No, no, it will be greater than or equal to. There are there is only at least, okay. So, so what is happening here? So, what, so, so this is the kind of situation you will have. You will have to process 44 bits at a time, put out 60 bits and within those 60 bits you are guaranteed to correct any two errors, okay. So, that is the, that is the correct guaranteed thing, okay. So, if you start with an n equals 60 BCH code. So, what happens? n equals 60, d equals 5, BCH will give you what? Okay, so, once again you will start with alpha belonging to GF 64 is primitive construct everything with that right and then what would be g b c h of x it would be the product of two minimal polynomials right minimal polynomial of alpha and then minimal polynomial of alpha power 3 of x is that clear you can go through the same expression as before right you will have four rows in your parity check matrix alpha alpha square and alpha power 4 will have the same minimal polynomial alpha power 3 will be the other one but what is the degree of each of these guys <laughs> yeah remember that okay so it's 16 so alpha now is in g of 64 i'm using the same alpha maybe it's not a good idea but hopefully you can think of it as something different it's in g of 64 which is primitive so it would have degree equal to 6 okay so how do you confirm for sure that it has degree equal to 6 okay m alpha is primitive i guess it's 6 what about alpha power 3 you have to write out all the conjugates you write it out you will see it has size 6 okay so just like we did before so this would have degree equals 12 okay okay so what's the what is the, what is the dimensions that you get 60, 48, 5 yeah it is actually even in this case believe me it will be equal to 5, okay. it's greater than or equal to 5, but you can show that it is equal to 5. So, for the BCH code you get slightly more efficient than the equivalent binary view of the Reed Solomon code okay. So, that is the way to put it think about it slightly carefully. Okay. So, let us look at this uh, 15, 11, 5. Um, so, 60 is a little bit more complicated. So, let us go back to this picture and I want to look at this code a little bit more closely. So, let us go to, let us come back to GF 16. alpha is primitive. Let us fix n equals 15 and d equals 5 and ask for the BCH code. If you do that, you are going to get the generator polynomial to be x power 4 plus x plus 1 times. Okay. Okay, clearly degree is 8. So, what the code I will have will be a 15 comma 7 comma 5 code. Okay, can you go ahead and multiply this and tell me what you get? It is a simple exercise, but do the multiplication.
everything Eight seven six four one. Okay. Now, do you have a proof for the exact minimum distance of this court? Okay. It has to be equal to five. Why? There's something staring at you right there. Okay, so you have this. You have this uh, g of x itself. Okay, so this is a weight five. Code what? Can you give me any other weight five code word? Multiply by x for us. <laughs> I mean, it's an interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting thing. Any other x squared, x plus three? <laughs> All those things are interesting things. So remember, when you multiply by x, what are you doing? You're shifting by right. So it shifts, or what's happening? All right, everybody is happy. This is the code. Okay, fifteen seven five. Okay, so now let's come back to this uh, same old game we are playing here with this n and f n and d. So let's say we go to d equals seven. That's the next step, right? So let's go to. What's happening? Okay. Something has gone wrong with the pen. It's gone into a mode where. Hmm. Okay, let's come back. Let's go to d equals seven. Okay. Okay, so you can once again write down the matrix if you want, but it's a little bit redundant, right? I don't have to write down the matrix. You know, one alpha is going to be there, alpha square, alpha power three, alpha power. Four. 4 alpha power 5 and alpha power 6 so what's crucial is what's crucial is what are the what is the first or let's say the second column of h right those that tells you exactly what you need to worry about okay so so anyway the, the so those those entries are called the roots of the code but anyway it's not so important to us so if you write it down you'll see the parity check matrix h would have 1 alpha 1 alpha squared so on till alpha power 6 okay so from here this this column is tells you the roots of the code what do i mean by roots of code okay so basically what it means is so if you have a code word c of x If and only if alpha, alpha squared, so on till alpha power 6 are roots of C of x, right. So, that is why that column is called the roots of the code, okay. So, if you think of your code words as a polynomial, all those entries in those columns are roots of the code word polynomial. So, it is called roots anyway. So, the roots are important. So, given a d, you can simply list the roots. Once you list the roots, the g also you can write down the generator polynomial is basically lcm of what m alpha m alpha squared m alpha power 3 m alpha power 4 m alpha power 5 m alpha power 6 i'm not writing the of x okay so it's just for compactness these three guys are the same and they are basically x power 4 plus x plus 1. What else can we say? What about alpha 3 and 6 also will give you the same polynomial, right? So, that will give you the x power 4 plus x power 3 plus x squared plus x plus 1. What about alpha power 5? Okay, so, first of all the degree is important, degree you can quickly find without doing any Galois field arithmetic, right. So, you only have to look at the conjugates, what are the conjugates of alpha power 5, alpha power 5, alpha power 10 and then it comes back to alpha power 5. So, it is just 2, so the degree is simply 2, 
Okay. From there, you can easily find out what the minimal polynomial will be. Why is it very easy? Degree 2, right? Degree 2 and it is irreducible. All minimal polynomials are irreducible. So, it has to be x square plus x plus 1. Right. That is the only irreducible polynomial in binary, right? x square plus x plus 1, if nothing else. So, it has to be x square plus x plus 1. Degree 2 you can find very easily, even this you can find for any power. Okay. What is the LCM of all these guys? It is simply the product of these 3 polynomials. So, that will work out to something. Okay. So, in general, degree is going to be, in particular, degree is going to be. Okay. So, I want you to go ahead and do that multiplication and tell me what this polynomial is. It is easy. I mean, you already done the part of the multiplication. You only have to multiply it with 1 plus x plus x square. So, let us see what will be the final answer. Ten eight. What else? Is it? Okay. So, given all this information, what are the various parameters of my code? I have n. And then I have. What is dimension? n minus 10. So, clearly this code is meaningful only when n is at least 10. Okay. So, you cannot have n smaller than 10, then it, you cannot have d equals 7. Okay. So, that is what it means. If you want d equals 7, you should have n at least 10. So, n is equal to 15 is a good thing to have. Just think of it as 15. 15 and 15 minus 10 and then what about minimum distance? What do I know? It is equal to 7 because there is, there is the weight 7 code word. So, this guy is the weight 7 code word. Right? Okay. Happy. So, if in specifically if you pick n equals 15, you would get 15 comma 5 comma 7 code. Okay. So, I can also write down the corresponding Reed Solomon code. Okay. How will that look is something you can write down, but I am not going to do it. Okay. It is very easy. The Reed Solomon code is easy. Yes or no? What will be the generator polynomial? Alpha squared, so on till x plus alpha plus six. It will be n comma n minus six comma seven code. Okay. You can do the BCH comparison and find out how many more bits the BCH gives you if you like. Okay, you will get some similar answer. Okay, the next thing is d equals nine. Okay, let me. I will give you about 2 3 minutes to scribble something in your notebooks and then I will write down the final answer here. Yeah, yeah, same thing. I am not changing.
okay. So, instead of writing out the parity check matrix, I am simply going to write out roots. What are the roots? Alpha, alpha squared, so on till alpha power 8, right. These are the these are the roots. So, if you want to write out GBCH, it will be the LCM of all these things. Basically, if you look at it very closely, you will see it is m alpha of x times m alpha power 3 of x times m alpha power 5 of x times alpha power 7 of x. Okay. So, this has got degree 4, if you count the degrees, this has got degree 2. Oh, 4, I am sorry. 2 for 7 also you will get 4, you will get 7, 14, 13 and 11. Okay, so, 4 that works out to 14. Okay. So, basically you are expecting a 15 comma 1 comma greater than or equal to 9 code. Okay. <laughs> so, I know a way better 15 comma 1 code, <laughs> which is what? The repetition code. Okay. So, in fact, it will turn out that this is also the repetition code. Okay. So, what will happen when you actually do the multiplication? So, I told you all the other minimal polynomials. This guy is x power 4 plus x power 3 plus 1. You can take the previous one and multiply with this. You will see that you will get 1 plus, I'm sorry, so once again there is this. You will get everything. You will get 1 plus, oh my god. You will get 1 plus x plus x square plus so on till x to the power 14. You will get all the powers of x, okay, x plus x square plus x power 3 plus x power 4. You can test it out if you like. Okay. You will get this. So, in fact, what is the minimum distance of this code? Actually, 15. Oh, do not just go by the weight of the generator polynomial. <laughs> In this case, you can. I mean, it's, there are some exceptions to this rule. Be very careful. <laughs> do not do not happily. I mean, there are reasons why we got those answers. So, here it works out. It is actually 15. So, you have basically the repetition code. Okay. You cannot take any other n. Okay. So, you cannot take n less than 15. Does not make any sense. Okay. So, you have to take only n equal to 15. So, you get 15 comma 1 comma 15 code. Okay. So, there are also several other ways of quickly seeing that this product has to be equal to this. Okay. How do you see that? The reason is this G B C H has basically worked out to product x plus alpha power i, i equals 1 to 14. Okay. Yes or no? Right. I know this product i equals 0 to 14 x plus alpha power i is what? x power 15 plus 1 minus 1 or plus 1 x power 15 plus 1, right. It is actually usually you multiply with x also and say it is x power 16 plus x. So, you do not include the x, you go away. How do I go from here to here? i equals 0, which is the x plus 1 term. So, I have to simply divide x power 15 plus 1 by x plus 1 and that will give you that answer. Okay, it is like the G p formula, you know, plus and minus are the same. Okay, so, you, this is another way of seeing how this answer is not very surprising. Come in a come along the wrong direction, it might be surprising, but in the right direction, it is very simple. Okay. So, people have done these kind of exercises for all Galois fields, not just 16, 32, 64. I mean, it is not a very difficult exercise, the algorithm is really, really simple if you are only interested in the degree, but if you also want the generator polynomial, it is a little bit more work. But if you pick up a standard book in coding, most probably towards the end, at least the older books, Lin and Costello for instance, it will have a table of 
all generator polynomials. So, you can go there and look it up, you will get the answer. Okay, so, you do not have to do this work yourself, but finding the degree like I pointed out is a trivial task, you can do it very easily. So, n and k you can find and a bound on the degree you can find, on the minimum distance you can find, but if you want the accurate minimum distance and all it is a lot of work, but even if you want the generator polynomial it is some work, you have to multiply the, multiply the polynomials and get some answer. Okay, one more thing I want to warn you, this thing of looking at the generator polynomial and finding the minimum distance is very special, it does not happen all the time, there are exceptions, there are very notable exceptions, but in many cases that is a good rule, that is a good starting point, okay, but there are exceptions also, be, be warned of that, it is not always the, it is not a foolproof method for finding minimum distance. Okay, so, I can also write down reed solomon codes, but I guess this is not too, uh, not uh, not very not very interesting, but on the other hand let us go to some some field, one field in particular, couple of fields which are quite popular in practice, I mean there are actually codes out there where people use these fields, okay. so you might be surprised, you might think how big is 16, 16 is very small today, right? today in, in a small, small, very small chip you can have billions of transistors, of course there is 16 is a small number today, okay. so 16 is not so scary. The most popular field at least until a few years ago, the most popular field for reed solomon codes was actually GF 256. Okay. So, remember why would this be popular, why do you think this makes sense 256, what is so special about it? Yeah, 2 power 8, right. So, two, the reason why this is most uh, interesting is many uh, computer memories and other things, hard drives, whatever processors are organized in bytes, okay. I mean data is always organized in bytes, you want to send bytes, receive bytes, etcetera, okay. So, naturally this became a very interesting field, because a byte gets converted into one symbol and you can store that symbol as a byte and manipulate it and play around with it, everybody liked it. Okay. So, when coding theorists went to digital systems people, they liked it a lot, okay. So, that is the way to think about it. So, this is useful. So, I mean I do not even know for instance, I, I do not know off the top of my head what an irreducible polynomial of degree 8 is, okay. I cannot, I, I do not, I cannot recall that, but all that is not really needed, you know. If you just, if you are just worried about some very basic things like block length, dimension, minimum distance, you hardly ever need anything like that, right. And that too for reed solomon codes, you do not even need anything. If you write everything in terms of alpha, it is just all fine, I mean no, it does not matter at all, right. So, for instance, suppose I say, I, I pick my n to be, what is the largest possible n I can have if I go to 256, 255, right. So, I cannot go beyond 255, so let us say we pick n to be 255, okay. And another very common choice for d is 17, okay. So, that is just some is putting out some numbers here, it can be anything else, you can pick any other d, I am just picking a d equals 17, okay. So, then what will happen, what will be my g of x? Yeah, so you simply do everything in alpha, it just works out fine, right. Okay, it is simply x plus alpha, x plus alpha squared, so on till x plus alpha power. 16, right. So, what is alpha? Remember alpha is, alpha is primitive, okay. I cannot simplify this product unless I do Galois, Galois arithmetic, but like I said, I mean today MATLAB can do this, anybody can do this, I mean, it does not require any special skill to do this multiplication, you can do it, you get the answer, okay. So, the reed solomon code would be what, 255 comma 239, 17 code and we have a really, really compact description of this code, the generator matrix gives you a complete description, right. So, let us do the binary conversion, you will see that this is impressive, okay, you will be a little bit scared, it is not so easy to do this. Suppose you do a binary conversion, what do you get here? 2040, this would be what? Yeah, 
somehow 2040 is stuck in my head as a memory. Is this correct? No, the multiplication. You're all staring at it like, what is this? So it's it's easy to yeah. You can subtract also, right? So 16 times 8 is what you have to subtract. What is 16 times 8? 128. You have to subtract from here. That would be 1912, and then greater than or equal to 17. Let's say it's equal to 17. Okay. So this is after the binary conversion. Just pause for a second to think of this object. Okay, what is this code? I am now dealing with the binary vector space with dimension 2040. Okay, 2040 bit sequences. How many of them are there? 2 power 2040. Okay, so that's probably bigger than the number of electrons in the universe or some such number. Okay, so it's huge. Okay, from that huge set, I am able to give you how many? 2 power 1912 again once again a huge number you can't even fathom how big that number is right so it's huge 2 power 1912 vectors i can tell you i can give you a very compact description for each one of those not just some very vague thing that there it exists or something i can give you exactly how to generate each and every one of those right this is a two a very simple polynomial multiplication method and what am i guaranteed that any two vectors differ at least in 17 bits Okay, if I told you at the beginning of this class you will do something like this, you might not have believed me, right. Today you know how to do this, okay. It is quite a non-trivial task if you think about it, okay. This huge number of vectors, you can find another huge subset or subspace to be specific. Any two vectors in that space are at least 17 bit flips away, okay. So that is how it is quite a non-trivial task hopefully. At least you are impressed with these codes, at least for that reason, if not for anything else. Okay. okay. So, if you want to now think of a BCH code that will challenge this code, okay, right, you have to have a similar block length, right. So, 2040, right. So, if n has to be 2040 or something. 2 power 12, right. So, you have to go to 2048. So, m equals 12. So, this 2048 BCH codes are also quite popular. In quite a few applications, mostly proprietary applications, people use these codes because this you can see it is it is powerful. See, for a long time also VLSA technology was not so advanced. So, GF 256 was kind of the limit that you could go. Today, you can go to like GF whatever 2 power 12 is nothing. You can go to 2 power 20 if you want, right. It is not there is not much of a limitation from VLSA side. So, people are going to larger and larger field and when larger and larger fields are possible you know it is to for an uh, it's it's of an advantage to you to go to bch codes right we we've been seeing that all along so instead of doing reed solomon if the only problem is not being able to go to a larger field then you can just go to a larger field and get better efficiency for the same minimum distance or yeah. other way around same efficiency get larger minimum distance okay so something like that you can do so let's try to ask the same question for 2048 now again, GF 2048 is a scary big field, but you, it's not difficult in VLSI today. Remember that even in software, you can write like a C program which will do operations in GF 2048 and do encoding and decoding very very fast. Okay, so it's possible. It's not though so difficult. Okay, so it's not so scary today, but in the classroom it's a bit scary when I say GF 2048. But you will see without doing too much, you can quickly find at least n and k. For BCH, even for 2048. Okay, you don't. All you have to know is multiplication, right? <laughs> multiplication and modulo, modulo multiplication. You can find the dimension very easily. Okay, so let's do the same thing uh, with BCH. Let's say we say n equals 2047. Okay, so you can say 47, right? So might as well go to 47, and d equals 17. Okay, 17 is a bit weird. It is a bit more difficult to do the computation, but I want to keep the same d and I will give you a simple argument for how we can do it, okay. We will not worry about it, okay. So, d equals 17. So, you have to have an alpha which is in gf 2048, which is primitive, okay. And then what will happen to my g b c h of x? What are the roots? The roots are? alpha through alpha power 
16 alpha alpha square all the way to alpha plus 16. So, my GBCH will be the product of m alpha x alpha power 3 x alpha power 5 x. So, on till alpha power 15 x ok. Assuming all of them are distinct ok, believe me they are distinct ok. <laughs> okay. So, do you believe me or not? You do not believe me? If you do not believe me, you have to prove me wrong ok. <laughs> I know none of you are going to be ready to do that, it is an easy check you know I mean at least conceptually it is a very trivial thing to check these things ok. I do not have to worry about the even powers of alpha y, they are all covered in the odd, but all the odds will be distinct in this case I think quite sure if you want you can go and check ok. They are distinct and in fact all of them will have degree equal to equal to 12. Okay, all of them will have degree equal to 12. See the fact that all of them are distinct maybe you can check without too much computation, but the degree also you can check without too much worry actually, but not in a classroom you are not going to be able to sit down and do it unless you are some major exponent of quick computations it is difficult to do that. So, degree is 12 ok all of them have degree 12 believe me you can check that. So, then what will be the degree of this guy? Okay. So, in any case even if I do not know much about this uh, much about this field it is very large field I am not able to compute I can always bound the degree degree can be at most 96, it cannot be less than greater than 96 ok. So, that is important. So, once I have this n minus k equals 96, in the bound case I know it is degree is n minus k is less than or equal to 96. So, I will get a lower bound on k, basically. it does not matter. So, k becomes n minus 96 ok. So, basically you have a 2047 comma what is 2047 minus 96. So, maybe 2040 no. So, sorry I do not know why I put 2047 maybe I got confused. Let us say 2040 just to keep the comparison with the previous thing going if you subtract 96 what you will get 1944 I am sorry 96 and then let us say minimum distance you do not know let us say it is 17. So, I know it is a lower bound, but let us say we put an equality there 17 ok. So, maybe you are not very happy with how explicit and well specified this code is, but like I said it is not too hard you know I mean you just define a big table with 2048 entries I mean 2 kilobyte tables is absolutely nothing I mean it is very trivial today just have a table implement the arithmetic you multiply it out you will get a very specific 96 degree polynomial. So, 96 degree polynomial is also not too scary binary polynomial that could ok. So, I have now specified a code which has how many code words once again 2, to, two power 1944 ok. It is again huge directly in binary I can specify each and every code word in this very easily with simply a 96 degree binary polynomial ok. Then what am I guaranteed? Any two code words will have at least 17 bits difference. Okay, so the advantage with the Reed-Solomon code is about four bytes or something, right? Yeah, 32 bits more you get than this. Okay, so finally when you get when you do all this, it's you see the simplicity of the whole thing to know exactly why everything worked out maybe you need a little bit of math and all that, but ultimately the it is really really quite simple right. What you need is only multiplication and addition <laughs> integer multiplication <laughs> integer mul addition I did not do anything beyond that here ok right. And like I said today you go to MATLAB, MATLAB will give you all these polynomials you can ask it to multiply and you will get the generator polynomial and then you can implement the encoder you know exactly how to do it. So, it is very very simple to come up with BCH and Reed Solomon codes today. Okay. 
Okay, any questions? Like everybody is busy thinking about. <laughs> okay, there was a question. The most important question now is okay, we can encode. We can do two two power two thousand forty, two power one nine one four four. All that is impressive. But what do you do at the decode? Okay, so that's the most crucial and difficult problem if you think about, it, right? So okay, the encoding was tough. We didn't know how to generate codes with arbitrary minimum distance, right? So now we know how to do that. Okay, so any error correcting capability, we can come up with linear codes. We can come up with parity check matrices, no problem. We know that. But equally important is the problem on the other side. Okay, and it's been quite some time since we visited the decoder. Okay, so the last time we visited that was. Syndrome decoder, right? So that's the idea that we saw. Okay, so we saw that syndrome decoder is complex, not quite so simple. If you want to correct many errors, it is complex, right? So, so that's the part which is a little bit more non-trivial. So let me let me maybe do a. Uh, so in the next next class, which is tomorrow, we'll 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 pick up from here and do the decoder in some more uh, serious thing. But should I point out anything more? So the only thing I want to point out in the next uh, two minutes that we have left is the following. Okay, so so one of the properties. Okay, there is a special uh, cyclic BCH codes. Okay, so usually when people say BCH codes, they always mean n equals two power m minus one. Okay, so this is the standard convention for BCH codes. You, al you always take n to be equal to two power m minus one. So in this class, we've been saying n can be less than two power m minus one, but usually n is taken as equal to two power m minus one, and you take alpha belonging to g of two power m to be a primitive element. Then you define a parity check matrix. Suppose design distance is d. go ahead and do this alpha alpha squared alpha power d minus 1 and let you complete it you know what it means then the final thing would be alpha power n minus 1 alpha squared power n minus 1 remember n is equal to 2 power m minus 1 okay so again reed solomon codes also Okay, so also read Solomon. Okay, I said BCH, but read Solomon also when n is equal to two power m minus one, both of them have the same parity check matrix. Okay, what you can show is this cyclic property. What is the cyclic property? If uh, if you have a vector c, which is let's say c zero c one to c n minus one, is if it is such that h times c transpose is zero then this implies if you look at this vector let us say shifted left by one position but make it a cyclic shift bring the c0 all the way to the other side this will also satisfy the let us say this is c prime this will be a c prime transpose will also be 0. Okay. So this is the cyclic property of these codes and it is valid only for n equals 2 power m minus 1. Okay, so for other n, clearly it will not be valid. For n equals 2 power m minus 1, you will see if you, you can prove this. It is a very simple thing to prove it. You just simply rewrite, every, multiply first row by alpha, second row by alpha squared and so on. The last row will become 1. Everything will cyclically shift to the left. It is a very easy proof to do that. So once you do that, you will see this is also true. This is the cyclic property. So basically what it means is you take any code word, shift it, rotate, shift it either to the left or to the right. I have shown it to the left, but if you lift shift left enough times, it is a shift to the right also. So either shift it to the left or shift it to the right by arbitrary amounts. Why is arbitrary amount? But one shift is true, then you take the same thing, shift it again, shift it again, etc. Okay. So you shift cyclically either left or right, you will get another code word which belongs to the same code. Okay. So this is true for both BCH and Reed Solomon. Okay. And it's true only when n is two power m minus one. It's very crucial. When it's not two power m minus one, it won't be true. Okay. So these are cyclic codes. So in coding theory, there is a separate separate branch of study called cyclic codes, where people study cyclic codes in detail, then approach BCH and Reed Solomon codes from that angle. Okay. If you take the book, for instance, I'm pretty sure that is the angle that they've used. Okay. But somehow I like this thing of giving the parity check matrix and then going finally and showing that anyway, guess what? This is also cyclic. 
Okay. So, both approaches are possible. I encourage you to read the second approach also in the book, for instance, book by Lennon Costello. Read that and you will get some interesting ideas there also. Okay. So, we will stop here, pick up from here tomorrow.